All right, guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Lennox Bennett, as you can see right here. My number is 5492161. All right, so today we're going to look on some information technology. Um, past paper, two questions. All right, so let's get right into it. And guys, um, please ensure that you attempt the question. All right, but not change, even though a paper too. All right, let's go. So it says, Using appropriate examples, explain the difference between discrete and continuous data. This is one of the most popular questions that CSEC love to ask. All right. So type in the comment section what you think the answer would be. All right. And then we can compare. All right. So guys, first, what I would do, I would just always look at the term. All right, so let's look at what discrete mean. All right, let's go. So discrete basically mean distinct or separate, all right? So for discrete, so I will define discrete first and then I define what is continuous. All right, so if you're gonna use numbers, for example, I know that because I'm a more time, I'm more mathematically inclined. So for example, discrete numbers would be like one, two, three, four, you know, there's no in between. But for like continuous, you can have like 1.1, 1.2, 1.35, and so forth. So that's one of the main difference between continuous and discrete. All right, so with continuous, there are more intervals. So instead of just having one, and two, you can have many, many numbers between one and two, right? And that is continuous data. Examples of continuous data, like we height, we weight, right? But our age would be discrete. So you see they are, although people say they are one and a half, <laughs> but you know, you are either one year old, then you are two years old, then you are three years old. You don't want to see somebody get up and say, I am one and a half years old today. All right? So that's an that's a um, perfect example for both. All right? So guys, please ensure that you can differentiate between discrete and continuous data. And everyone should know what is meant by data. Remember, that's part of the syllabus too, right? So data is basically the raw information before it is processed into information. But everyone should know that, right? All right, let's move on. All right, so this one says now, define the terms hard copy versus soft copy. Anybody want to type that in the comment section? What's the difference between a hard copy and a soft copy? And remember, it's information technology, right? Waiting for the answers. Come on, guys. Come on, let's go. All right. Let's, let's define what he is meant by hard copy. Now, hard copy deal with something that is more with us, you know, physical or permanent. For example, a printed paper, right? After it come out two. The printer, and you hold that in your hand, you can say, yeah, that is the hard copy. While the soft copy would be when you're seeing it on your screen. So we can turn the soft copy into hard copy by printing. Or can we turn hard copy into soft copy? Someone an answer that question, all right? One way we can do that is to probably scan the information into the computer and, and it becomes um, a soft copy. 
All right. All right, let's move on to question two. It says, question two, list four functions of an operating system. We want to take on that four functions of an operating system. What is the operating system used for? What is the function or the purpose? How can you tell that it's an operating system? So basically, an operating system controls the program, right? Yeah, that's one. It controls the program. Another function of the operating system is it, it controls the input and output. As I was discussing about the soft copy and the hard copy, right? So input is when you put data into the computer, while output is what is given out, right? And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be printing. It can be sound, right? Like the speaker that give off output and all of that. All right? So that's that's what we listed, what? Two of them. So one, I should I type in? Let me see if we can type in this. So one, it controls the system controls input and output. So that's one of the function. I don't even know how to use this so good enough, guys. This is new to me. And it controls probably one of the main one. It controls program execution. All right, let me see if I can type again. If, if I separate box. All right, that's fine. All right. So it manages storage. So it manage storage. So the operating system of many functions. And it also assign tasks to the computer. So basically the operating system of many functions, all right? You guys can type in in the comment section um, other functions of the operating system. It also provides security and control. So it's a form of security and control. Have to be typing, guys, which is new to me. All right. So B says now, give one benefit of the user of a custom written software. Right? So what's the purpose? First of all, why would somebody want a custom written software, right? Um, a custom written software is basically the right the software to to be to specific to your need or whatever your business need, right? So basically it would be easier to use. It would be, let me write that. So it's easier to use, not it would be, it, it's easier to use. So that means So thus makes it more efficient, all right? So since it's specifically built for the user need, right? 
it's going to be much more easier to use. It's going to be very efficient because it have a specific Java, specific task. For example, when you go KFC, right? Um, I know everybody loves KFC. I don't know if it, I don't know in the other parts of the Caribbean, but everybody loves KFC. So you want a two piece meal, right? That's built in. So you just click two piece. Instead of you're going to type one, one item and so forth. All right. So that's another, that's an easy way to, to, they only ask for one. And the thing is many users can also use it, right? So no one need no special training to use it because it's built for that purpose. So in cases where you have high turnover in a business, somebody get fired, a next person can just go on immediately and it don't take a lot of training because it is built specifically for all the purposes of the business. So that makes it much, much easier. Because it's specific. All right, so let's move on. You guys can always type your input also. All right, it says, give one benefit of a user general. Give one benefit of the user of general purpose software. If it's general, it can be used by many persons. It can be used Right. So, for example, if if somebody built a general software, just like a, a calculator, right? It's just general. Anybody can use it for their purpose of addition. It's not built specifically for a special. Whether you know a special company, all companies can use that because it's general. Right, but the thing about general, one of the disadvantages is that it 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 can be beneficial to some more than some, and less and can be less beneficial to some because, as I say, it's not geared towards a specific task; it's just general tasks. All right, all right. See, you now it says. I want you guys to type in this one. What does the abbreviations OMR and MICR stand for. And it says, describe a situation in which each can be used. All right, so go ahead and do that. What's the answer for that, guys? All right, so the OMR is the optical Mark Reader. While the MICR, type that in for me now, guys. What's the MICR? That's the magnetic. All right, so the OMR is the optical mark reader, while the MICR is the magnetic ink character reader. This is, I've done this many times in the multiple choice. So if you are following my channel, then you can say, okay, yeah, watch that. You know what I'm going with that. All right, so for the M. MICR, which is the magnetic ink character recognition or reader, it reads the data and pre record, for example, and checks and deposits slip with a special 
ink, a special kind of ink that can be magnetized. All right. And the optical mark reader was an example of that, guys. Type that in the comment section. I mean, what I can think of is like um the multiple choice, the marking of the multiple choice papers and stuff, right? So you select A, B, C, and D, and it will read that. All right. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I've come to the end of this video. I will see you guys in another video. This is the next minute. I'm out. No doubt. See you guys in another video.